Uh, he does have two copies of Abrupt Decay, two copies of Pillar of Flame, a Naturalize, a Ground Seal, three copies of Duress, a Sever the Bloodline, two Dread Boars, a Graftigger's Cage, and two Slaughter Games. Of these, it seems to me, Patrick, that he's just going to want to sideboard in more removal. Yeah, that's definitely definitely his best action, for sure. It is, his threats are so awesome that all he needs to do is sort of keep his legs a little high and uh, pick apart the most relevant stuff that Hugo presents, and his Thraktusks and Nighthawks and such would be more than enough to be able to carry the game after that. Yeah, you see you see two copies of Devour Flesh, you see two copies of Rakdos Return, a Ground Seal, uh, and even a card like Liliana that I don't particularly love here, I would just want my removal to always do what my removal is supposed to do, instead of present my, my opponent with a decision on what they want to sacrifice to my Devour Fleshes or my Liliana the Veils, and I would just sideboard in cards like Sever the Bloodline, Dread Boars, you know, your Pillar of Flames or your Abrupt Decay, just to make sure that I'm always killing what I want to kill. Yeah, it's almost like Greg's removal suite is that of a control deck with a bunch of card drawing. Yeah. He has all these singletons, which is fine when you're looking at a bunch of cards, you have Snapcaster to rebuy on your on your best targets. In a deck like this, I would want to be a little more homogenized with my removal suite. There's just the best cards to be playing in that slot or the opposing cards you're most concerned with and you should be trying to to beat that stuff oh, and not just have a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this, you know. Oh. And, and on Hugo's side, we saw the three Searing Spears in the sideboard. He has three Rest in Peace, two Cells Conscripts, a Boros Charm, four Hummaster the Fells, and two Ray of Revelation. I think uh, Hummaster is probably for Mono Red or decks with a bunch of, you know, Elves in it, that sort of thing. So I don't necessarily think they're in in, in this matchup. But the Zealous Conscripts, we saw the Searing Spears, we saw. And those are the cards that seem good to me here as well. He has one Boros Charm main and one on the board which uh, also is good here, A, because he's just a little more aggressive deck in the matchup, and B, Gregory has a ton of removal, and, you know, potentially things like Mizzy Moore's Bomb Pile of the Dam, those kind of cards can be there as well, so protecting your best threat is pretty valuable. I think overall this matchup is one that probably probably favors Gregory, with so much removal in his deck. Um, you know, Hugo can definitely get himself off to a fast start because he does have Foothill 4 Hellrider in his deck, so... You know, don't want to say that's impossible for him to win, but Gregory has so much removal in his deck. It's worth noting that I've seen Jund a lot on camera, and I've never actually seen it win. So there could be a curse going on here as well. Mm. Could break the curse. And there's a mulligan. And there's a mulligan from Jund. <laughs> Maybe it's you. Maybe it's not the Maybe. Deck. Maybe it's you always here. All I know is I don't think very highly of Jund, and I've never seen it win. And I'm not, it's, a, it's a chicken and egg thing. Like, I'm not sure if, it, if it's just not very good and therefore doesn't win, or because I've never seen it win, I concluded that it's not good. <laughs> yeah. I don't have that good of a grasp of my own psychology to say conclusively, but I do know that I don't think it's good, and I've never seen it win. So, Well, this is that. the game where they're going to change your mind. Yep. All your Jun players out here. And he, 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 a fast keep on that mulligan of six by Gregory Mitchell. So we are underway. We are going to see an Addison's Pilgrim start the show for Hugo. We're going to him for Gregory, and he's going to pass it back. All right, attack for one. And it's a cliff drop. Cliff okay. drop retreat and say go. Do we have our? Do we have an over, a, a far seek? Nope. No, we do not. That's a, and that's a big one to miss here because he can go get way out in front with a good four here. Yep. So he's Boros Charm, the draw step here for Hugo. You see a root bound crack being pushed forward. We'll see if he has one of his awesome four drops to be able to play here. And just an attack for one. Mm. Just passing the turn back, so very, very unexciting. Gregory, if you're Gregory, you got to be pretty happy about that, not having yeah. a far seek or anything. Stomping Grounds coming to play untapped here. And we're going to see a Vampire Nighthawk look to play a little bit of defense. Do we have a... Yeah, I had to assume we have a Searing... We got to have something. Yeah, Searing... We don't have... <laughs> We don't have creatures, we've probably got spells. Searing Spear says no, sir. Forest drawn here for Hugo. And Thunder Maw Hellkite. Thunder Hell Kite. okay. That is the something that you were talking about. Right. And he has Boral's Charm in hand, so actually, uh, Arbor, if if he's able to attack uncontested next turn, is actually exactly full if he double strikes his Thunder Maw Hellkite. So that'll be 10. And then the Arbor, and then the, the Pilgrim, rather. Oh, uh, no, it matters. Dreadmore. Okay. And a Blood Crypt. We'll pass the turn back. Okay. Hugo draws a card. It's a Strangle Root Geist. 
right, let's keep the beat yeah, going. Yeah, totally, totally fine draw there. Knocking him down to eight here is significant with Boros Charm in hand. So the forest who just passed the turn back. I agree he's going to need some sort of Thrag Tusk, Cut Match of the Fell, something like that right now. Yeah, he needs to gain some life. Even a card like Killer Flame wouldn't be so bad. Four mana. There's your Hunt Master. Okay, that's All a right. that's Gregor's a big one. Going to move up to ten. He's going to get a Wolf Token. He's going to pass the turn back. Is that a Temple Garden? Yeah, we're a little land heavy there over on. On Hugo's side of the table. Yeah, you see a Temple Garden, you see a Forest, and you just see a, that Boros Charm still. So he is flooding out a little bit poorly here. It just seems like, you know, he just needed that one more spell to maybe push this across. So now he has to consider what he needs to do before Gregory actually stabilizes here. And Gregory is definitely threatening to stabilize with the Hunt Master of the Fells turning into Ravager of the Fells. Yeah, and what is noteworthy here about Hugo's build of the deck, and I'm not saying it's necessarily wrong because the mana is what it is, but... He has no copies of Keswick Wolfron in his deck. So once he gets into this kind of spot, he's drawing much slimmer than a lot of other Naya style decks are. Because Wolfron makes it, you know, a Wolfron on this board in this game is completely different. Yeah. You know. As you did see Hugo send in with both of his guys, Addison Poker ended up biting the dust. No spell played, and Gregory almost misses the Huntmaster trigger. But remembers it, flips it into Ravager of the Fells. That's going to be a 2 to the Strangle Root Guys, which is going to make it a 3 2. And 2 to Hugo, which is going to bring him down to 18. But 8, eight is a very significant life total with Boros Charm in hand. Uh oh. 13 is it's 13 different. Now. 13 is different. 13 is a lot different than 13 is a lot different. And this is where, you know, things get tough because now Gregory's drawing to, you know, either creatures that are awesome or removal spells that'll take care of Hugo's creatures. You know, he does have some bad draws, of course, in theory, in like a far seat, but he has a lot more good ones than he has bad ones now. Yep. And his life totals at, at, at such, you know, 13 is so much. Draw step. There's a flint hoof boar. And really the only thing Gregory needs to be doing now is being conscious of zealous conscripts. Yeah. Just don't attack in such a way where that, that matters. Although, you know, because of Boros Charm, and it, you know, if, if Gregory is not anticipating that card, he actually might be more in range than he anticipates at certain points. Yeah. Yeah, the absence of Keswick Wolf Run here is just causing Hugo to be drawing much slimmer here. That's dramatic. It really is. Especially because we saw how Keswick Wolf Run dominated the second game that Gregory Mitchell played. I mean, I understand you have you have Boar and Strangle Root Guys and Hellrider. I mean, you're, and Smiter, your man is taxed, but that to me seems like one of the biggest incentives to be playing this deck. Yeah. Can we get one? Can we get one cast of Wolfram in there somehow? It's Gregory untaps and draws. Tapping that on his main face. Can't be feeling good about this. We're going to see Olivia Voldaren. And that's going to threaten to start going to work now. Yep. And Patrick, I believe in a moment here, the curse may be broken. The Jund curse may be lifted. Nine, three, six. I mean, I think with the Boros Charm, isn't Zell's Conscript still lethal here? We've seen an attack for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This attack's not for lethal. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I think we're still. I think we're still. Uh, we're still right in it. Perhaps a little bit of foreshadowing. We have some counting here. Yeah, he's making sure he has enough mana, I, I think, to if he has. He's basically Although, deciding, do I have to unveil the Boros Charm right now? 
Yeah, although I think if he, he only has one card in hand. Yep. He says Boros Charm you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is there we go. Script's time. No way. No way. Oh! <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh no! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> the jump course continues! It's you! It's you! There's nothing it can be, it's you! Gregory, come to the realization. Yep, that's mine. And back with everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Has, oh no, he has something. He has abrupt, abrupt decay. decay. That's still nine. Yeah, it's that's exact. One of four. Oh, there's no mountain. Oh, for the board. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we have cliff top retreat. Crag oh play. wow. He's right. Oh. Oh wow! The the curse Gregory is broken. Mitchell. The curse is broken. Look at Hugo. You can't believe it. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Yep. Wow. Wow. That was a that was a good sweat. That well, you want to talk about a game? Yeah, that's it. That I've was never, insane. I've never seen the board not have a mountain before. Me I'm either. Turn eight or whatever. Yeah, me either. No stopping ground or sacred foundry out there. Is there some confusion as to? I can't imagine there's any confusion to the result. No, I mean, left holes were right all yeah. the way. Yeah. I mean, Hugo was thinking the same thing.